No surprises on the Giants cut list. Mario Manningham did make the roster, but he was put on season-ending IR. The Jets cutting Dimitri Patterson today, the corner who was a big free agent signing but went AWOL for 48 hours, spent just four months with the Jets. And a former second-round pick, Stephen Hill's career with the Jets is now over. Hill, never living up to his potential, earned a reputation as a player with raw talent, but drops too many passes. All right, so let's talk about it with Jets beat writer from Metro New York, Christian Dyer, joining us in studio. Good to have you in here, man. Good to be here. Well, it's a big day here for the Jets. Obviously, well, for all these NFL teams going down to the roster cuts and knocking it down to 53. Any surprises you see with the roster cuts here? Uh, a big day and a tough day, yeah. I'm sure. I mean, you know, you're seeing players that you saw come along through rookie minicamp, and some of them have been veterans on this team for a few years. I think the first big name that sticks out, it's not Stephen Hill. It's going to be Dimitri Patterson, given the dearth of, of, of just talent that's going to be there at the cornerback position with D. Milner potentially being out week one, perhaps week two as well. Here was a veteran guy, someone who was being signed, you know, to kind of shore up things. You don't have a Darrell Rivas there anymore. You don't have an Antonio Cromartie. So you expected Dimitri Patterson to come in and play on that outside opposite of D. Milner. I think that was a surprise. Another name that stuck out as a surprise uh, was Garrett McIntyre. I thought outside linebacker might be an area where they would need a little bit of help. Uh, McIntyre's kind of been there, done that, has been proven uh, that he works in the scheme and Ron Tez Miles second year I mean he might be eligible for the practice squad not sure if he's going to get to clear waivers though yeah but a lot of these uh, I guess GMs look at this as kind of like a mini draft because it's really a second draft do you see any guys out there right now that the Jets could be bringing in well you know n names are still kind of filtering in as we're trying to figure it out but you're going to looking obviously at the cornerback position they're going to need someone I would imagine uh, to at least help them get by for the first few weeks uh, when, when you have Milner perhaps not being ready to play week one from what I'm hearing he won't be able to play week one. Uh, you, you really need someone to kind of step up and be out there. As good as the Jets' front seven is, you still need that kind of lockdown corner to make things, and that frees you up with a lot of other of the exotic blitz packages That's just as well. what stings so much about the Dimitri Patterson signing. I mean, listen, the first signing that John Itzik had last year was Mike Goodson. Yeah. First signing he had this year was Dimitri Patterson. Neither of them exactly panned out so well here. Yeah, they, they both have A walls or middle yeah, names, I guess. What the heck? It, it is a little bit of a challenge for, for Itzik now. What does he do? How does he filled out. You know you want to keep cap space available to be able to do a re-signing of Muhammad Wilkerson. Jeremy Curley's become Mr. Third Down, so you yeah. want to keep him as well. But you have to step up and do something at this point, and I think that back end needs a little bit of help. Yeah, you've got all of this cap space, and I understand the idea of being frugal, but do you think that Itzik's philosophy of the long-term vision of the team is working out short-term? I think it is, and I think maybe we were led a, a little bit of a stray because the Jets were so good last year. I mean, everyone was saying 4-12, and 5-11. They step up and be 8-8, eight and eight, and now the expectations are playoffs. Right. Expectations might be a little too much too soon when you're looking at the team from a team-building component. I think they're a talented enough team to be a playoff team. I think they could be a 9-7, and 10-6 and six team very quickly. Uh, but with all that being said, they're still in a rebuilding process when you look at the, uh, at the depth, when you look at the young players that are coming in, 12 draft picks this past year. Right. So uh, yeah, I think the rebuilding and perhaps the big spending comes in year three, year four with John Idzik. Uh, but right now it's going to be about developing that younger talent and more towards that back end of the roster. So uh, I, I'm not quite there to say that they should go out and freely spend quite okay. yet. Well, they've set themselves up for a big year next year in the spending spree. All right, Christian Dyer from Metro New York. Great work. Thanks so much. We'll be catching up with you throughout the season. Thanks, Steve.